YouTubers! Welcome, and we got another project going on here today. So, I'll show you what's going on. Got some machining to do. Let's get started. Well, here's what I had for a rear caliper. This was off like a 76 Honda 750. And this is the bracket that it mounted on, which initially mounted right up here. This was all higher, right there. Now, I wanted more rear brake. This one gets kind of hot, of course. I'm talking something to stop a motorcycle, not this heavy thing. Whoa! And what I'm gonna put on here, I got a machine all this to fit. And you can see already where I started on this piece here. And then that rides on the bearing. This would be for a greaser. Now, the calipers that I want to run, these are, there's a piston on each side. I believe originally uh, Lockheed designed these. I'm not sure, but anyway, they're a really nice caliper. Oh, it's off a 76 MG midget. No, for a rear control arm, I spent a whole day trying to get this all apart where things were kind of rust seized on the shaft. I actually ended up with my big porta power ram going through here and pushing on all this to get it off originally. Now, that bearing goes into this aluminum housing here. And the brake rotor, I got that machined. It's recessed in here right now, so it'll be centered. I had to cut on the rotor and on the hub to get that to fit perfect. Uh, then a taper lock, they call these, are what hold it on. Now you can see this is that hub, and that originally, that brick rotor there was on there originally. What would have made this job way easy is if I could have mounted him right on the control arm here. And you can't do that because the axle moves independent on each side with these arms. It's a self-aligning pillow block is what they call these guys. You can see where then the axle can tip. And by the way, she never popped off once yet. Here's what your hub looks like when I got off and apart. And you can see it's all drilled and tapped already. And then there were bolts that went through there to hold it on. But I machined that down a little more there and cut out some of the center of the rotor here. And that way I got a press fit and we just got to line it up so we got something to drill through for all the bolts. And uh, I looked at brake rotors uh, on my uh, oh, car repair parts site and they had the dimensions of all the rotors. And this was off of a Honda, uh, 2000 Honda Accord. So anyway, that's got to be drilled today so he fits. And then this is the piece right here. And I got my pattern and I gotta machine this flat because I want it to set in here real nice. And I gotta cut this down even a little more. I didn't go quite far enough. But anyway, that's gonna be on here. And that's gotta get uh, bolted onto here. So that's where it's all going. I got my Lexon all bent already. You just gotta finish putting it on and get my lettering done on it. But for those of you who never seen this thing before, uh, you got your front brake right here, and that's the rear brake. You stomp totally in the center, you can roll this thing down in a hurry, and then you rock your foot to the right, and it kicks the back end out, and you can slam the power again, and uh, put it into a nice drift. Now, for under the hood here, I'll show you another thing that you gotta know. Now, uh, I had an MG one on there originally, and to replace it years ago, it was very expensive. So this is off a 66 Chevrolet, I believe it was. And then, because of a bigger piston in here, you gotta uh, put the function arm up closer to the pivot point. And then, this is for the front brake, and this one here is for the rear, which I might have to change the pedal location depending on how touchy they can caliper is. Here's a better look at the axle where it can tip. And if you did have that caliper mounted on the other side, when the axle tips, it would bind the caliper pads. So that's why I gotta make all this other stuff up. And uh, I use my 3M Puffet wheel, one of them gold ones. And uh, now everything fits like it should.
So we're gonna start out with, I'm gonna go to the three quarter inch collet. Loosen up that nut, bring him down, and make sure you catch him. Hammer would be nice, but that would come open. Where are you stuck? There we go. So I'll switch him out. Hide over there, meanwhile. Stone. I have it parallel with this so I can run back and forth instead of going this way it would be kind of a pain and uh, they got these little alligators here and uh, they're kind of almost like a ratchet thing and what you got to do with them is just slide your thing on a little bit of downward angle and that should hold her pretty good just tighten them up and you're rocking now right here, what I'm going to do is check the depth for how far the quill is down, or whatever you call it. And I'm already at zeroed. Now, I want to go in an eighth of an inch. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start it out. Yeah, let's go part way on the cut here. I'm probably going to overkill this a little bit, but will be good and uh, I got the vac to grab some of the chips but I'm not going to turn it on otherwise you won't be able to probably hear anything so let's get started frequency drives you can you don't have to change your belt no more I think you've seen them if you were regular watcher here you can turn it up and down and never have to change the belt they're awesome all right and then for cleanup time we just grab this little homemade ball belt thingy here hit the gold button and curtain right here keeps the chips out of the screw but I'll finish vacuuming you gotta watch that later we'll get back to you later here we have attachment C right here I think it's floor there you go A 
be back down and use this for eh, that red sheet a little bit. But anyway, there's your final product. Yeah, I think that'll get us by. Now we're gonna make a nice flat edge on here. This is kind of rounded, and I don't want that. I want a nice square tight fit in that aluminum donut that I just worked on. So we're gonna maybe run a pass or two on this. Let's see how it turns out. And hopefully I don't hit the camera. <laughs> That lathe gets used a real lot. The milling machine, not real often I get to use him, but as you can see, he comes in handy. And here what I was, here's what I was trying to get to show you. And then that's going to go on here. And then because of that rounded edge being gone, it should fit pretty flush on here. So now we gotta cut out the pattern for that caliper mount. Yeah, got everything all center punched. So we're ready to go here. And I hate that when the drill bits are magnetic. But away we go. Start out with an eighth inch bit. Run! There we go. wanting to run away on me so I decided that's a better idea there. Hey, we're gonna keep going. I don't think that it's a little dull, but it works yet, so we're okay. And for you guys that don't watch all my videos, I'll show you a neat little trick here. When the drill bits become magnetized, like the soldering gun, and we go here and look at that, we go whoosh and whoosh. There, no longer magnetized. And this takes 5 16 fine thread bolts on that hub, so I'm just going to go one size over 5 16. Yeah, I could probably slow it down a little bit. I know I need a taller tripod, and yeah, maybe something. I'll make an extension for them. Yeah. 
And of course that bearing's got a snap ring that goes right there. So it's just not pressed in all the way right now. And get the caliper on here. Maybe I can't. There. You just gotta make up that red bracket now. And then there's a torque rod that'll go from that red bracket up to the sway bar right there. Guys about due for a new tip. What do you think? Anyway, that should give me a starting point. There, a little bit of grinder action. And now we got our rough cut. And I'm gonna take it over and see how good it fits. Probably gonna need a little more yet, but hopefully I'm in the area. I'm getting there. Now I gotta do some drilling and tapping. We're gonna angle that guy off and round him out, and that's for that brick torque rod that's laying down here. I drilled the three holes in here first because I wanted a location without this on. And then what I did is I put a 3 16th through here. And I wanted to make sure that these were tight on here. So when I drill the rest, we're gonna be good. Now, here's my torque arm, which keeps this apparatus from rotating. I got a little sleeve in here and pinned, loctite And then up here, I have uh, spring loaded each side, so then I can move a little bit on the sway bar if it has to. And over here, yeah, this could have been down probably a little farther for your zerk, but I know I had these on a shelf, so I just use one of them. And then for sure you can get on easily. Uh, these three five sixteenths here, they're drilled into this three eighths plate. Uh, these are fine thread here and uh, three eighths fine thread bolts. <laughs> Them, yeah. And here's my brake line. I had to get some banjo fittings 
bolts for this because I didn't have anything. Kind of an odd one. Uh, three eighths uh, fine thread for the banjo bolt. So, and then here's, I gotta get the set screws in here yet, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, basically, this is what we all got here. A little better look. And now what I'm doing, I'm working on, I gotta get the old brake hose out of here. And uh, this is gonna be a metric fitting right here with the brake line that was in here. So I gotta cut that off, double flare it, and then figure out where I wanna put the pressure brake light switch. Dog. <laughs> Put the wheel on. I want my ride. Well, wheels on. Brake is in all installed and done right here. Got the hose clamped here with that clamp to add on a bar. Cut one of them off. Uh, I got my little retainer right here for the other end of the hose and then it goes into the steel. Now, we'll run you around on this side. I took my panel off. I've been busy over the weekend. Got my ammo box mounted and a few other little widgets done. And, of course, uh, let's see if I can get a shot here. The little brake line comes under the engine there. And that's my brake pressure switch for the brake lights. And then it goes up to the front. I have all the Lexon cut. Unfortunately, the guy that does my lettering here is sick at the moment and I got a new Lexon for this here too. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit to get our vinyl done. Well for the rear brake, which is the one on the right there, right here, I knew there'd be a problem and something I should have ordered, but I didn't. You gotta pump several times before you get pressure. Now what's going on is too much of the fluid, the two pistons come out too far, and then you got to pump several times to get your pressure back up. I'll go show you what I should have ordered but didn't. Now I'm down here at the other end and we're gonna look at the doom buggy. Now I got a valve under the dash right here where you can adjust your front rear braking but of course right yeah, I should have put a light in there but if you can see that blue valve right there that's what I need on the cart that I put in this system here. I was so tempted to rob that out so I could see how it worked, but I guess I gotta wait a couple weeks till the dang thing gets here. And also, over the weekend, the one access here had a problem where it was real glitchy, not working right, so I took the, it ended up being a problem in the panel here, and it's working real well now. These are all homemade things. You get the, uh, you get the overlay from Schumatech in the plastic box in the circuit board and the rest you do yourself and you get the parts from Moser Electronics. Of course the lathe one here, uh, I put the green LEDs in there and I put the red in this other one to match the machine. And then also I had the hose uh, for the vacuum coming out over here. Well it rotates the way, it throws the chips this way. So I did a little mod on him for that. And then you can always pull this out and clean the lather or whatever for the vacuum. And it gets turned on right here. Oh, the problem that I found inside here, I should have shot that, but I didn't, of course. Uh, the four, four wires that come off this far one here, uh, they flip in like a, the old phone stuff. And they, you got to push the wire real hard to get into the little fork to cut the wire and it wasn't contacting real good sometimes and that's all it ended up being for that problem. And of course one switch shuts the 220 off for both machines. Would you expect any less? <laughs> now I know a lot of you aren't real excited about this go-kart stuff but I did get that machining and stuff so you could see me doing a little bit of something that might be a benefit but in the future I'll get you some different stuff that you might be able to use for your home stuff so anyway I'm happy this is done now other than the vinyl so I can get on to some other videos so I want to thank all you for watching and spending time with me and I'd love to see you back here again like would be appreciated if possible and hope to catch you soon thanks for watching bye bye